So this one should be an interesting job. Uh, it's something I've seen other people do. It's a problem, a problem, but it's something that a lot of areas have. Uh, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to go a bit Frank Sinatra on this one. Just do it my way. So uh, I'll show you what it is. So you've got your Vario. You want to turn it into a camper. Previously, it was a bus. So the thing we're looking at in this video is how to put a seat there. A lot of these Varios, uh, I've seen uh, some people convert them very nicely and they put a seat kind of where this bulkhead is. Uh, so the seat sits back a little bit so you can get in and out via the steps that come with it. Uh, they've been, these were modified when they built them. They put, uh, there's like a big fiberglass tub that kind of goes in this area here and uh, the door itself gets extended with a piece of fiberglass and it's built up at the bottom. We're going to remove all that and uh, we're going to take this, this tub out of here and we're going to put a seat up here because, because Mrs. Bob wants to sit next to me when I'm driving. Super. I want to set up the front with you. Yeah, you know, this is that you normally get in and out of it. Uh, but we've got plenty of seats, excuse the mess, we've got plenty of seats to play with. I'm going to take one of those seats over there and put it at the front here. But with provision for getting in and out to the back of the vehicle because I don't have a side door. So, um, in true YouTube fashion, I'll show you how I do that now. No, no, now. Now, I've seen it's done. It usually. Oh. Right, the first thing I've got to do is, is strip it out. I'm going to take this uh, take this floor out, uh, try and unstitch all of this. It will probably look terrifying if I take it all out. We'll take everything out of there and we'll rebuild it in steel. Also, we've got to look at this door. This door's extended. It's got like a fiberglass all up on the bottom and I can really see there's a bit of trouble down here. I'm going to have to look at that and make some repairs. Uh, but we'll take it apart and uh, see how it looks. We'll take the steps out, we'll take this carpet off and see what this, uh, how big this fiberglass bit goes to. We've got to return it to some sort of normality. You know, it's all been cut out. There is steel around. I'll, hopefully I'll plate it over with some steel, make a better step, uh, and we'll see how that, how that feels. So this is the weirdest thing. I've taken out, <clears throat> we've started taking out the bulkhead. I've taken this, the bulkhead that was there has come out. It's actually glued in, would you believe? Excuse me. <clears throat> It was glued in, uh, so it took a bit, a bit of yanking, a bit of working as it came out. So I've started taking this, this like a subfloor. There's a subfloor here. Uh, this is the fiberglass tub that I mentioned. It goes all the way around, all the way around there. Uh, it looks like it's cut. Um, it looks like it's cut along there next to the uh, the uh, gear lever bit there. But this is really interesting. I've taken a bit of floor up. All right, I've undone a bit of floor. Put it down just so I can reveal to you. Lifted it up. Right, taking it off. I've not seen this before, I must admit, uh, and that is full of sand, right? So it's like a insulation, fireproofing. It's a really cheap way of doing it, but that is full of sand. I can imagine the whole floor is full of sand, which is a really odd thing. Do you not? Do you not think? I might have comment if you wish if you've seen that before. I've never seen anything like it. Um, I'll, I'll stick it on Facebook as well in the groups there to see if anyone's ever seen it. After finding the sand under the first part of the floor, I thought I'd take up the rest of it to see how much there was underneath and it ended up being about 20 or 30 kilos of sand, which was just getting everywhere. So um, I took all that out, cleaned it out, and I've now replaced it actually with, uh, with some polystyrene underfloor insulation, which uh, is much lighter and obviously much more efficient. So right then, that's all chopped out now. Uh, as you can see, it leaves quite a big scary hole. Uh, there's no side in here. You kind of look a bit. You think, I think, is this more than I can handle? But it's not so bad. Don't don't panic too much about it. It's only metal plates. That's all it is. So it took some getting out. There's a lot of mastic around the uh, around the edges there. Just being very careful not to drill through any cables or hack for any cables. They used a combination of uh, angle grinder right here, a cutting disc on it, and uh, my trusty oscillating saw. I'm not sure where it's called properly uh with a mastic blade on it they're uh, they're pretty good actually let's try and get it in focus for a change there you go they're pretty good actually those uh, those saws so quite like using that so there we go next job is to uh take the door bottom off to see what that needs and then we'll start thinking about how we're going to rebuild this there's a closer look at it there uh, as I say, it wasn't too bad. This, this arch here had a, a fiberglass extension that kind of carried on right the way down to the bottom of that modified door, and it rusted a bit out the top here. But again, nothing too, uh, nothing we can't repair. So then we're all cleaned out. 
we've taken the bottom of the door off uh, and it's not in a good way I've got to say um, if you look at it it's, uh, it's pretty rotten it's obviously gone that's where like, it's like a fiberglass cover went over the top of it which I took tore to pieces and scrapped but it's, it's not that great I'm gonna have to repair this door somehow um, I'll get an out the skin for it <clears throat> and somehow repair the inside lip there as well but let me show you my secret weapon this is what we're aiming to do look at these <clears throat> these are Mazda Bongo seat runners in the back of a Mazda Bongo you've got two rows of bench seats uh, each uh, with their own set of seat belts and this is a pair of those runners from that van so I'm gonna put one seat on here bolt it through plate it underneath and hope you make a very very strong seat base for the passenger seat as you can see they are quite long the idea being that we can uh, use the seat to go right the way back uh, to there and uh, I've even got a swivel base to put on the seat base so that I can turn it round uh, in true camper fashion so it faces the other way that way it should leave a space clear here to step in and out of I'll make it so you don't trip over these things I'll raise the floor up slightly so that these are flush these will be flush with the floor um, with some spaces and do it the right way uh, should look good might take a little while but uh, it uh, certainly well, I hope it will work quite well so here we are offering up the uh, the footwell on the passenger side you can see i've cut away the rot from this wheel arch here i've repaired this section where there was a hole just uh, on the on the inside there offering up the footwell making sure that the line of the door follows the seal of the footwell there also i've got to get rid of this uh, this slope uh, if i was going to put the floor back to original it would be sloped at this sort of angle but we didn't want to do that so uh, we'll cut that off afterwards there it is then with uh, its modified sort of flat edge there just a case of tin snips and bashing it flat this frame on the inside here was already there pre-welded it was a support for the fiberglass step and the weight of people getting in and out was was born on this thing here i've added a bit more to it this strut here goes down to the step uh, there's a framework underneath here which you can't see and red oxide it to give it a bit more like longevity it wasn't really rusty actually it wasn't too bad uh, in fact none of it was too bad around there the mastic and fiberglass had protected it a bit uh, but as you can see coming back together now so when you last saw me uh, I'd left a big scary hole in the middle of my bus i would taken the steps out and uh, I was about to replace it all I've had a bit of an industrious back in the light there a bit of an industrious uh, bank holiday weekend and uh, I'll show you what I've done it's a good word industrious isn't it first thing we do is we cover up the dashboard and any soft furnishings i.e the seats I'll move that one now with some old cloth because when you're grinding with an angle grinder inside your van the sparks do tend to burn into things I've already ruined one of my cups speaking of which thank you very much um, yeah I already ruined one of my cups with the sparks and, and once uh, I welded up a car sparks across the windscreen there and left marks all over it so I was quite upset by that so watch where your sparks go when you're grinding anyway here we are look I've put a, uh, a metal floor back in I bought a sheet of 1.5 or maybe two millimeter I think it was two mil uh, sheet steel uh, and uh, cut it to shape and with the aid of bits and pieces I've welded it in there um, plug welded in places along there you can see my plug welds uh, but I've also backed it up with some seam welds as well because you know, why not I could um, new footwell as per the other side I'm still waiting for this wheel arch to arrive it hasn't arrived yet so I had to cut away some well wheel arch it was missing anyway because it's a fiberglass thing so we get to fabricate that uh, nicely welded and I re-welded in when I took this out there was no box section left in this section here on the passenger side so I've sort of remade that with that big thick panel it's about four millimeters that's about three mil thick that flat panel there not sure whether that's coming out and on the inside I've welded let's have a look shall we on the inside under the wheel arch uh, I welded a, a plate into there as well. You can quite see it's that plate there. Again, this area not finished yet because uh, I still get to put this wheel arch in to see how that goes. But this also added a, uh, a tahuli on this step uh, because we've taken the steps out and it makes it, I mean, if you can use it as a camper, it makes it a little bit hard to get in and out of if you're using these two short steps to get in and out of. So it's a little on this step. It wasn't that expensive. Uh, it's only a manual one. I didn't buy the auto one. Um, so I've, I've kind of fashioned that on there with a bit of a bit of bracketry and what have you welded and bolted in place. I'll put a dirty grey mud gut or mud flap over the front of this. Stop it getting, uh, stop it getting uh, covered in cack from the front wheel here when we do that. Inside the wheel arch wasn't too bad. Again, you've got a 
watch some of these you know it's not too bad now i've red oxided everything just to uh, preserve it a little bit um, just be careful when you're welding you're not welding any pipes or you know burning into anything in there i was very very careful what i was uh, welding next to um also the opportunity to bleed the clutch because it was just underneath this floor here i bled the clutch whilst it was there as well changed the fluid in the clutch uh, so yeah quite pleased this black goo around the seams by the way seam sealant it's the old uh, u-pole uh, tiger weld uh, tiger seal whatever they call it um, just brushed on just squirted in with a gun and then crudely brushed with a disposable brush around all of the seams that i've welded uh, not hiding anything i just want to, to be airtight and watertight so uh, it's uh, nice and nice and snug i suppose oh it doesn't let water i'm gonna go for a puddle where's the main thing so recap where are we up to we took out the fiberglass steps that lived in here this was the main entrance and exit access to the vehicle and i want to put a passenger seat in here so that uh, mrs bob can sit next to me so yep we cut all that out you saw the big hole i left there we've welded in a new standard footwell panel in there we've put a big piece of one and a half mil metal floor all the way around the outside slightly different from standard because standard I get this right would have seen the floor an angle going up to this slope up here much like the other side as you can see but i've got a, a thing i want to do with some seat runners here so plated welded it looks a bit of a dog's dinner because i absolutely plaster it with uh, with uh, sealant and and uh hammerite uh but it's solid you know, it's pretty solid enough i'm quite pleased with that so to aid entry and exit to the vehicle i've added one of these little dual step things which come in and out I'll get a better picture of that uh, which is sturdily sort of bolted to the chassis actually I've, I've made a frame that holds all that on so we can get in and out you know quite easily place those steps they're quite nice this is the manual one it folds up underneath like that and I'll, I'll patch all that in nicely um, another part was this uh, piece of arch arch that I've put in here this is all missing actually this is where they cut it out when they put the fiberglass steps in here this is all taken out and missing so I had to rebuild that patch it all in there couple of plates around it and again we'll tidy all that up and we'll make sure it's nice and nice and rust proof when it goes in there but you know it's all solid all nicely done uh, and painted over as well so uh, i've also got a new a new arch uh, the right one this time uh, to put on the front there so coming along quite nicely bit of a major job but uh, you know i'm quite pleased how it came out it wasn't that difficult um you know wasn't that expensive either really so i worked it all myself still it's not too expensive so let's move on so where are we up to then? So these are the Mazda Bongo floor runners that I've, uh, I've bought. I've cut them shorter, so took them to pieces, took the trim off them, cut them shorter to down to about four foot. So uh, this is, as far as you can see is how far the seat will go back. So try to mount them. We're going to mount them straight through the floor. I've had to make some spaces up to get the, uh, the space right for the floor that's going to go back in here, along with the, the floor covering that's going on top of it as well. So hopefully should be about right so I've careful measurement required there so that's one of them loosely bolted in as you can see we've got a bit a little bit more to go the other one's just there uh, and we're bolting straight through this metal floor and putting some sizable plates underneath I think these should do it these came from screw fix these ones should be do it should do it. okay three mil thick uh, 10 mil sort of packing pieces but uh, not too expensive we'll put those under every single bolt bolt 10 mil we have a flange nut on the other side and a, a locking washer as well so next stage is to get these runners in and get them secure these rails then there they are bolted in I've got a couple of bolts to go on the side here really really awkward to get to they were so careful measurement making sure you offer them up level make sure they were straight parallel all the way back there i put the two runners in uh and uh, put a bar across and ran them backwards and forwards made it absolutely certain they were straight be a disaster if there wasn't and of course once they're bolted in there's a floor over the top you know they're, they're not coming out again they're going to be in there for a long time so uh, again make sure that you're accurate with that next picture another angle there you can see the sort of shape of them they're incredibly strong these things like i say they hold two rows of bench seats which i believe can hold at least two people possibly three people with seat belts so they are plenty strong enough for this provided you bolt them under the floor with plates as i've done uh, that's strong enough to hold a single seat and single person. This is the swivel base that bolts to the top of those two runners. Uh, under here, I've put a mechanism. Actually, I think I took a picture of it. It's quite straightforward, basic uh, little chrome lever I, I found in the in the scrap bin, connected to the release mechanism for each runner. Each runner locks itself down into the into the rail itself, and it's as I say, it's a swivel base. So it it, it took a bit of doing on and off a few times, but we got there in the end. 
uh, until it was nice and smooth. Another angle of it there. Um, you know, it was, uh, and again, there's plenty strong enough. It's not just a single bolt hole through a through a plate. You know, this is bolted all the way around here. It's a sandwich plate, uh, and again, incredibly strong. Uh, that's not going to come off in a hurry. On top of that, we've made a frame up, welded up a big frame using the original steel um, box section, and uh, bolted that onto the swivel. And that's just enough angle of that. And have a few here. I'm putting the floor in. So raise the floor back up again, 30 millimeters, uh, and then started to put the plywood floor, new plywood floor down. There's little nicks in it just to make sure the thing sits level, uh, but quite strong. It's quite a framework to put in under here. So make sure you do it strong and level. Uh, again, there's that there's that framework. And you can see the mechanism there, actually. I did take a picture of it. It's just a simple bar that pulls down these two levers, which release the locking mechanism, which is on each one of these. OK, then, so job done. Uh, you may recall we had a set of steps here into uh, what was a bus type affair. And uh, the missus wanted to sit up front. I can't get you in the shot here now. So now we have one of the seats that are in the vehicle in the front there. So, right, she can sit up the front just like a normal passenger. But by the means of a genius mechanism, I can now lift this lever up and shove it all the way back. All the way back. All the way back. So that it then becomes uh, a camper again there you go so um, i'm trying to show this in the shot where i can get it in you can see those runners those mazda bongo rear seat runners and they're buried in the floor i've put the trim over put a new floor down as well today uh so it's not uh, you know it's not protruding in any, any way you can step all over it you know so hopefully that'll be reliable enough bolted solidly through to a seat base through to a swivel uh, which we now can operate On there, swivel it around, and then we have a seat configuration of two different height seats. I must admit, uh, just trying to get you into shot here, uh, where uh, it will become. Uh, I'll put a table in here. I'll put a table across there, uh, like a little dinette table for two. Uh, well it's quite nice mrs mrs bob is quite short i'm fairly tall i'm six foot two so when we when we sit in these seats we're at eye level so she's quite pleased with that uh, and of course you know it makes it uh, much easier to get in and out of the vehicle so there we are i'm quite proud of that uh tell me what you think in the comments if you think it's a it's a job well done uh like i say you know a little bit of ingenuity a little bit of thought uh, and you, you two can come up with these ideas so uh thanks for watching there we are then a few more pictures of uh, the finished article as i say i'm fairly pleased with that i could put a bit of trim around the bottom of the rail there but it's okay i was quite uh, pleased that the seat levels came out the same uh, in fact i made sure i can adapt one of these seats to fit in the driver's side as well you can see i put my baggy seat cover over the original seat there uh, and they're quite a substantial piece of kit but what i'll try and do is i've got a couple of these seats i'll see if i can make one of these fit over that side so i can get myself some armrests and she's not exclusively got the comfy chair uh, there is rolled back it, it rails back rails slides back quite easily a little bit of wd-40 in the runners there just hoping we don't drop any stones or screws or anything down there um, always be a magnet fishing job um, on the other side there i'm going to put a bit of a kitchen i'll show you that in maybe another video fairly soon and uh, the floor is a it's a, a vinyl click lock floor it's like a laminate floor but made out of vinyl three millimeters thick so first time i've used that material I'll give it a try and see what we think there it is facing the other way uh, on its little seat box there and there it is folded they fold as well these seats they're quite they're quite nice seats actually as i say you've got six of them with the vehicle and they're quite uh, quite well made i believe they are mercedes ones anyway there we are